Hello, everybody, and welcome to the new and improved vector map data portal. My name is Alex Potter, and I'll be guiding you through a tutorial here on how to use some of the application's basic functions. So now when you first enter into the site itself, you will see this data use conditions pop up here. We ask that you do read this carefully. And once you have, click I agree, OK, and now we are in vector map. If you come to the bottom right here and click on this little icon, it will actually enter you into full screen just to make everything a little bit easier to view. And you'll see in the vector map layer list that we've opened up into tick map. And you can also see that we have a host of other map services from flea map to insecticide resistance map to mosquito map to all of our niche models as well. And each point that you see on the map is associated with one collection event. And if you come here, you will actually notice that a uh, metadata pop-up appears. Now, unfortunately, this pop-up isn't customizable in size. So you either have to view from this window or this maximized window here. And the metadata includes the source, the taxonomic information, sex and life stage, the date of collection, uh, geographic information and others. I'll exit out of there. And one thing I will suggest right now is that you only have one layer open at a time. The more that you have open, the slower that vector map will actually work. Uh, you could have all of these open. We could have flea map and IR map as well, but things just start to get clunky with the more data points that are available on screen. Um, one thing I will show you while I have all of these selected is the legend and it actually shows you the symbology associated with each layer that you have toggled on and I'll add one of our niche models as well. So you can see that pop up here too. Uh, that's low suitability in the blue all the way to high suitability in the red. Uh, and as you come back up here and toggle off each layer, you'll see they disappear from the legend as well. Now, in order to remove this pop up, you can either hit the little X close window button there, or you can just come back here and click it on the toolbar. Um, another thing to note is that if you do have multiple layers open, the one that's higher up that's closer to the top will have priority over the ones underneath it. And that means you'll be able to visualize this layer before you'd be able to visualize any of those ones underneath. So for example, I will close tick map so we can see. Um, if I turn on this free born eye map, you don't see anything on the page actually change. However, if you come here and deselect this 80s Tenurincus habitat suitability model, you will see that free born eye was open underneath. And you come back here and you select this once more, and freeborn eye is hidden again. So just keep that in mind when you're going through and playing around. Um, so I'll come back up here. And another thing you'll notice is that mosquito map is the only one that's grayed out. Everything else is in the white. And that is because it's the same issue as having multiple layers open at a time. Mosquito map as a whole is a massive layer. There are a few hundred thousand data points on there and having them all open up at once will drastically slow down the application. So for the sake of fluidity, uh, we don't allow that. However, if you zoom in to a certain area, you'll see that Mosquito Map does open up and become available and we can select, toggle it on. Now it'll take a minute when you have uh, the entire data set selected to open it up, even though we are zoomed in, but one suggestion that we have again is that you actually oops is that you actually come here and use this filter tool one thing that the filter tool does is it actually sorts through the data set that you've selected and you can have only those collection events that you're interested in appear on the map itself so i'm going to come here and i'm going to select a mosquito map i'm going to hit this carrot and drop down and then you see some of the metadata that we had earlier in that attribute table appear here. So you can select by genus, species, source, submitter, person, country, life stage, and others here. Um, I'm going to sort by 
genus. And one thing that we'll notice here is that once you select by any of these options, it will change what appears in the drop downs for all of the rest. So you'll see the species list right now includes all the species names for all of the mosquitoes that we have within the mosquito map layer. However, if we come to genus and we click on 80s, now only species of the genus 80s will appear in this dropdown. And I'm gonna select 80s aegypti and you'll notice on the map as I select it, that some of our points were removed. I'm gonna take it one step further and I'm gonna also sort by country here. So you'll notice these points in Bolivia. Um, I'm gonna actually come and sort by Brazil. So you'll see those points there disappear. And there they go. So now on the map, all we have available to see are 80s aegypti from Brazil. And I'll just show you one more example of filtering. It's gonna be pretty similar of ticks this time around. Um, so I'd come here, you can leave that on or toggle it off. I'm gonna to toggle it off and close that up. I'm gonna hit the drop down for tick map, turn the filter option back on, and I'm gonna back out so that we can see the full map. And again, once you switch between layers, it will take a moment for the larger ones to populate. So that is why we had a brief pause there. Um, and now I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna select by the genus Exodes. Now these are all in alphabetical order, so you could scroll through or you could just search up top. I'm gonna look for Exodes and species I'm gonna choose. Now all of these are only species in the genus Exodes. I'm gonna look up Scapularis. And there we go. So now only Exodes scapularis uh, records are shown on the map. I'm gonna zoom in, albeit a little too far. Okay, and now I'll show you the next tool on the toolbar and that is the print option. Um, this actually allows you to save this image um, onto your own local desktop. Now there are a few customizable options that we have here. We can change the title. Uh, I'm gonna change it to Exodes Scapularis of Conus. You can change the layout if you'd like. I'm gonna have this just stay default with landscape. And you can also change the format of the image when you save it. Um, I'm gonna have this be TIFF. Now, if you go to the advanced settings, uh, you'll actually see a number of options you can change. I change, I suggest that you preserve the map extent because that'll show you exactly what you have on screen here in the image that you go to save. Uh, everything minus the pop-ups and the toolbar, of course. So as we go down the list here, there are a number of other options. You can choose to include or remove the legend. We'll keep it there. We can change the scale bar unit. I'm gonna have kilometers. You can change the map size and the print quality as well. I'll make this the DPI 300. That's pretty standard for us. Uh, you could make it higher. The higher you go, the better quality image you'll have. However, the size of the image will also grow. So keep that in mind. And then I'm gonna click include attributes so we keep these points on the map when we go to print. So now the number of layers that you have open, the number of points on your map that are available, all of those will change the length of time it takes to print the map. Uh, so keep that in mind as well. And once it's finished, we can click on it here and we have our map. Exodes scapularis of Conus from the same extent that we just saw. We have our scale bar, some source information, timestamp. Unfortunately, we can't change the name of the symbology here. So we just have to go with tick map. And we'll come back up and enter back in to full screen mode. All right, so I'm gonna to move to the next icon in the toolbar, and this is actually the analysis tools. Now these are, whoops, closed in. These are actually really cool. However, only ArcGIS online account holders can use it. So that is unfortunate, but they are really neat tools. Uh, you can do certain things like calculate the density, aggregate the points, uh, dissolve boundaries, um, find hotspots, find outliers and point clusters, all sorts of different tools there. But again, only ArcGIS online account holders can use them. So I won't go too deep into it. If you do have that Arc online account and you have questions, feel free to reach out to us with them. Now the next icon on the toolbar is the base map gallery. Now the underlying map here is known as the base map underneath the points and you can change that just by clicking here. 
So now we have the charted territory map on. And if you were to print right now, this is the map that would show up behind your points. Uh, there are a number of other ones. There's different uh, hybrid imagery ones. And if you zoom in on these, you'll actually see some of the data change. You'll see the names of water bodies, of cities and whatnot, different street names as well. We'll scroll back out. And there are a number of other ones, uh, Nat Geo style. There's some topography maps here. We're going to go back to light gray canvas just because it's the easiest one to actually view the points here. So I'm going to exit back out and move over to the add data tool. Uh, now, some of these options here are also going to require an ARC online account, like some of these in the search toolbar here. We have uh, the my content, my organization functions. And if you actually have any data or maps saved in your profile on ARC online, you can add them to vector map from right here. So that is pretty cool. You can also upload maps from the ArcGIS Online Living Atlas. And that is pretty awesome. There is a number, there are a couple, a few hundred different map layers available here. And they range from terrain to satellite views to temperature and precipitation maps, all kinds. And I'll show you just how to add one. I mean, just click add, of course, and then it pops up. If you hit the carrot here, uh, you can see the symbology. If you toggle it off, then it'll stay up here, but it doesn't show on your map anymore. So now we'll go over to the URL option and you can actually add data from different web services or different files if you have a URL for them, which you just add here and click add. And then there is the file uh, dropper browse option and that's probably gonna be the most used one, I would think. Um, it's fairly easy. Just come here and browse and I'm going to use some data that one of our partners shared with us. And you can actually show uh, all of your data up on vector map just like this. And it will show the associated metadata as well that you had in your spreadsheet. All of these are 80s Egypti records um, from South America. Now there is a sticking point. You can only upload 1000 records at a time. Uh, and there is no way to change the symbology of points that you add. So if you do have large data sets, we suggest that you'd split them up by species. That way you can toggle on and off different species at a time if you're interested in viewing a different one other than Egypti, instead of going through and having to click on each point to see what the underlying metadata says the species is. Um, okay, so now we have that. Let's scroll back up and exit out of there. Now this next option is actually the share tool. Uh, it is also pretty cool. You can actually share a link to this app to the image that you're viewing and you can also embed the image in a website. And it won't just be an image, you can actually uh, play around with it in a localized window on your web page. So say maybe you were interested in a certain flea species and maybe you had a bionomics page about it and you noticed that we had some occurrence data and you wanted to add that onto your web page, you could allow your users to play around in the map and view them therein. So that is really cool. Um, and I'm gonna move to the last option and that's just an about vector map uh, pop up here. It tells you that the Walter Reed Biosystematics Unit hosts and maintains the world's largest online database of about 700,000 entries of high quality insect vector surveillance data. And of course, there's more information here if you'd like to read. And you can also learn a little bit more on the vectormap.si.edu website. Um, that about does it for me here in this tutorial. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to watch and listen. If you have any questions, my email is potterA at si.edu. That's P-O-T-T-E-R-A at si.edu. That should also be available either below or above this video in the text. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you again, and I can't wait to hear your guys' feedback.